Hello, and welcome to Diecast Calls. I'm a buyer of collections. I'm always looking for Hot Wheels and vintage Matchbox, Corgi, Ertl, Dinky, etc. Today, we're going to go over something real kind of neat, actually, um, in a segment of the market, so to speak, which is the emergency emergency units. Starting out with a Malaysia base, old number five. This is an interesting casting that shows a number of different intricate features. The plastic ladders um, that's accented by two different uh, finishes of chrome, the gold and the silver, or chrome, if you will. Interesting combination that Mattel decided to select on this particular model to bring back a, you know, an era back in probably, what, the 1900s, maybe 1920s, 19th, probably around that time. Look at the detail. The hammer, a couple of nozzles on the side, <laughs> the fireman's hat sitting in the back there, a couple of hoses and some rope. Yeah, very neat detail on this one. And what they also did is they painted the underside uh, all red. See the paint all the way through? And here's the single rivet holding the casting together. Cast is inserted into the front. You can see that. Sometimes this uh, particular Blackwall era model is showing um, some wear on a certain vulnerable points. The fenders are sometimes very vulnerable to wear, as well as the corners and the sides. And you can see a little bit of wear on the side there. Um, also, the fenders uh, the bumpers, the, the bumpers in the front, sometimes those are, are vulnerable to be broken off. So there's old number five. Again, it is a Malaysia base. It says 1980 in the castings. I'm going to put these all together sitting here all over yonder as we take a trip down memory lane, so to speak. And then um, moving towards uh, more modern equipment for the emergency and the police, et cetera, would be the rescue unit. This is actually um, some selfish advertising on Mattel's part, but Hot Wheels is the rescue unit, uh, rescue unit number 51. And you'll see a common theme here with the 50s as I take you through a couple of different castings. This is a plastic base, and it shows a yellow plastic insert for the light bar and the back hose and tanks. Real lightweight model, very lightweight black wall era model. Um, oxygen, first aid, they did an excellent job on the tampos, mass producing these and keeping, um, keeping them consistent in quality. Look at the smoked glass on the front. And there's your base, which is a Malaysia plastic base. Look at the rivets. I'll show you a comparison to this as we put this uh, over yonder for just a second. And that would be the precursor to that, which is the, uh, a plastic base, but a manufactured in Hong Kong emergency unit, number 50. So there's the comparison between the two. You have the 1980s version versus the quote-unquote original plastic. They're both plastic bases, but uh, and they're both black walls. You can see number 51 versus number 50. Yeah, there's that guy there. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this one. The uh, the blue plastic insert on the light bars. We talked about the hose and the tanks. The very vulnerable parts of the casting would be the sharp edges. So there's the comparison between the two. Emergency and number 50 and number 51. I'll put those right like that. <clears throat> Moving right along for more emergency here is the Fire Eater. Fire Eater, also plastic base. This happens to be Malaysia. Blackwall era number 51 with the, um, the Telltale three stars. <clears throat> the driver's side, not as much detail. The passenger side, a little bit more detail showing the ABC compartments, the controls, the pullout for the flares, all simulated, of course. This is 
hours and hours and hours of enjoyment, you know, arriving at the scene of the fire, you know, pretending that you're the chief or you're taking care of, uh, you know, pulling out the hose, attaching to the hydrant, getting out the pick and the axe and the other, the shovel, you know, all the little details, little compartments. Really, really cool detail on this. Clear glass, clear glass for the um, the wind, we'll call it windshield or windscreen. Nice detail on this. And then what, um, in that space, if you will, in the marketing space, Mat uh, Matchbox came along. Of course, they were in the market way before Mattel and the Hot Wheels era, but here's a little bit later version of a similar type of emergency unit. This was made in Macau. Uh, it says number 80 in 1980 on there, command vehicle. This was airport, command airport. And uh, this was used for in, in putting out the you know, aircraft fire with foam because you use foam on a JP2 or JP3, depending on what the actual fuel is for the airline. Um, and basically what foam does is it pushes away the oxygen to extinguish the fire. Foam unit number three, matchbox. There's your emergency unit. I put this guy, he's a little bit taller. Put him in the back. Keep this one over here. And then next up is responding to the, the call, so to speak, is the fire chief. Of course, he comes in as uh, a casting that's very, very familiar to you, of course. Uh, a casting that was used over and over again for different, all different colors. But Mattel really was on their game, you know, being able to, you know, substitute the cast and the paint to come up with different themes, if you will. This one is the Fire Chief. A little bit worn on the number five on the side there. Same thing on this side, a little bit worn. And you figure that, um, you know, small fingers are holding onto the car this way, right, when they're playing. And therefore, some of the tampo has been worn off over time. This is actually a Hong Kong base, stamp 1977, the Blackwall era. Probably came a little bit later because the the, the um, stamping uh, in the cast doesn't this is the, the year doesn't necessarily mean that's when it was released. It's when the casting was was patented. So they just kept that uh, consistent all the way through. Someone can say, "Oh, I have a 1967." you know, red line, but it's actually been, uh, you know, way, way after that time. But Mattel, again, for patented reasons, would keep the cast date on. I'll show you the difference here. Uh, this is a, <clears throat> a fire chief. I was referring to, uh, you know, how Mattel would use the same type of colors in a similar casting. Well, there's your, your police car with a similar type of cast. Um, however, this one was made in Malaysia. And this one, as I mentioned, was made in Hong Kong. Now look at the difference between the two as far as the rivets, as an example. The, the fire chief has got, you know, your typical, what we, was, we call spun castings. And the Malaysia base <coughs> police vehicle has these indented type of, um, of rivets. See the difference between the two? A similar type of detail in the cast. This is more of a what we consider the um, you know, toned base, if you will. This is more of a gunmetally base. I'll put the I'll put the fire put the fire chief down for a minute. Let's look a, take a look at the um, the interior and the glass. See the difference between the two. I should bring that back up again. But you have a, a blue tinged window versus clear. The interior is dark versus the interior is light on the fire on the police number one twenty three. And the tampos, very, really, really detailed tampo. See the, the, actually you can read it. Radar equipped, one, two, three. Service and protect. Light bar, glass, interior, the star. Both sides really clean to, to serve and protect. Nice black finish on that. And then to finish off the whole at least the ones that I have and uh, that are really available to me is what started the whole thing, and that would be the Red Line era. We call the, uh, the the cruiser, right? Sometimes people will call it the Fire Chief Cruiser or the Police Cruiser because Mattel Red Line era used the same casting 
for both police and fire, um, but it's only considered the cruiser. 1969. And this one, particular this particular model has what we call the capped wheels. Those actually are capped, which means that you could put a sharp edge right in between there and pull the cap off and replace it. Replace the cap rather than a bearing wheel. What do I mean by that? So this is a, a good example of that. A bearing wheel. Look at the difference. See a little white inside there? That bearing, this actually the wheel, whole wheel comes off of the of the bearing inside there. A little white area versus a cap. And the cap basically is this is the this is the uh, the base, if you will, of the wheel, and the cap can be can be replaced. Really interesting. So anyway, um, the cruiser was uh, Mattel's introduction into creating tampos. C H I E F with the the shield, if you will, based on a Plymouth Fury, as we mentioned. Beautiful spectra flame finish versus enamel. <clears throat> this is enamel paint. <clears throat> this would be spectra flame, of course. The sirens are typically the, the wear areas that you find on these on top. And sometimes the, the dome, the bubble, the siren itself, the light would be, um, would be worn down because of where you know the car was running against the the floor or the concrete the sidewalk wherever you're playing with the car but what a great example of what started this whole thing this thing meaning emergency vehicles and the emergency segment of the market for mattel and matchbox corgi dinky etc so there you go just want to introduce you to those types of things I'm always looking for collections. If you ever have anything that you'd like to send me, contact me through diecastcalls at gmail.com. I love collecting. I like to um, share these videos with you. I'll have some more coming up here in a, in a short time. But um, always having fun sharing this with you. So have a good one. Bye, everybody.